You're watching Bruiser Bedlam, one hour of the toughest and roughest sport in the world, Championship All-Star Wrestling. El Bracero joins us today. Flying Fred Curry meets Igor Zakoff. The Kentucky Butcher will be here. Also the world champion, the great Wojo against Man Mountain Tyler. Have you ever seen anything as big as that Kentucky Butcher? You're going to see him just how big he is. He's bigger than any wrestler in the world, except my friend Moose Cholak. He's a little bit bigger, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Wrestling Association is proud to present International All-Star Championship Wrestling. Another edition of Bruiser Bedlam, coming to you from the fabulous Premier Center in Detroit. is a 10 minute time limit a tag team match introducing from parts unknown weighing in at 230 pounds ladies and gentlemen the black cat the black cat his partner comes from Atlanta Georgia he weighed in today at 250 pounds introducing Frankie Adonis Adonis their opponents Entering the ring from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing 243 pounds, Rick Sampson. His tag team partner from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing 231 pounds, El Bracero. Bracero. One fall, 10 minute time limit. We have got a dandy here for you. What is this black cat all about? What a, he's a scary looking guy. That's, a, that's actually, a, I've been around quite a bit, Terry, and that's a, a Mexican mask. You can always tell the. Well, certainly he's. Now Rick Sampson has is, is improved since the last time we've seen him. Yeah. Uh, he's a, this man's a college uh, graduate too, you know. Real up and comer with an extensive amateur background. He's putting the moves on Frankie Adonis. This is El Bracero. El Very definitely in and out of the ring. As the black cat threatened from the other side. This looks like a solid action all the way, Terry. Yes, sir. We should see a lot of wrestling in here. Oh, nice move. I still see Sampson's going to be a real... He's got a bright, bright future. He's already a favorite of all the ladies. Yes. He's a nice little fella. Some nice, nice moves applied by Samson. Here comes the Supermax over the top rope and into the ring. And oh. it's over on Frankie Adonis. Oh, El Bracero. You know El Bracero's strong because that Adonis weighs a good 260 pounds. I don't know what they're to, but he's heavy. Here comes the Black Cat, our first opportunity to see this individual in action. Looks like something out of Friday the 13th. Oh, oh flying headbutt by Bracero. Oh. Series of beautiful moves. Uh. El Bracero is in the air and everywhere. And the Black Cat is out. He takes off. Mule kick by El Bracero. Oh, he missed that one. Though. Frankie Adonis doesn't want any part of El Bracero. No, he's had enough. He's going to he retreat to the relative safety of the corner here. I said, wait a minute. Adonis begging for a little time, but he'll not get that from El Bracero. El Bracero drives that arm up as he has Adonis' left arm twisted. You can see a dislocation there, I would think. Uh -huh. Samson takes over. And here comes the Black Cat. He broke uh, things up. Turned the tide in favor of his team. Frankie Adonis with the side headlock now on Rick Sampson. I notice he's got that thumb taped up. That could uh, pre potentially present some problems. Here's the Black Cat again. Scoops up his man, takes him over. 
Drops down with a fist across the throat. Rick Sampson, a man who is so skilled at scientific wrestling, getting exactly the opposite of Black he Cat. Catch him? He, headlock hits him. He caught him right in the face with his got hair on his mask. And he lays in a slash that takes Sampson off his feet. Adonis is in. He takes over after the tag. He's choking him. Coming to you from the beautiful Premier Center in Detroit, Michigan. Still to come on the program today, Flying Fred Curry will meet the Russian Igor Zakov. The Kentucky Butcher will be appearing today, along with the World Heavyweight Champion, the Great Wojo, as he meets Man Mountain Tyler. So quite a lot of action still to come in this hour. Adonis, so, oh, or Bracero, rather, on Adonis. Uh, this is his bruiser bedlam. Whoa, oh, head-on collision in the center oh, ring. And I haven't seen this in 10 years, Terry. Here we go. The old rowing machine. Well, I guess so. Yeah, see, the modern wrestlers don't use it because the referees are so fast now, they get you out of the ring too quickly. El Bracero quickly moving out as... They leave. Uh oh, watch Bracero. Oh, Bracero's up to the top rope, uh -oh. and here he comes. Uh -oh. Up, up, and away. And uh -oh. in for the count on the Black Cat. That's it. Samson kept Adonis busy in their corner as Bracero put some beautiful moves on the Black Cat and wound it up. No doubt about it. These two make a nice team, El Bracero and Rick Samson, doing a good job here on Bruiser Bedlam today. Biggest jump I've ever seen, Terry. Yes. Let's take a look at it again. We've got to see this move again. The We're highest. Going to see the rowing machine here briefly. Uh -huh. Winner with a super fly they put that stretch on Rick the four Samson legs of their opponents. Now watch Bracero. He'll lay one in on the black cat here. He slams the black cat, and here he goes. Bracero. First rope, middle rope, up to the top rope, and here he comes. The highest jump I've ever seen. Ah, oh, down he goes. It's like the man in the flying trapeze. In for the count, and that's it. Fred Curry coming up against the Russian Igor Zakov, and a whole lot more as we return. championship wrestling this Friday in Continental, Ohio. And we invite all our friends and fans in the area to join us at the high school in Continental this Friday at 8 o'clock. You will see two title matches. The Great Wojo defends the singles title against the Spirit of America, Chris Carter, and the tag team champions, Dr. Jerry Graham and Bulldog Don Kent, have quite a challenge for their championship belts as they meet El Bracero and Flying Fred Curry. Three more bouts at the Continental High School. It's this Friday. And coming up tomorrow night, it's almost here. Kip South. Reynolds and Heather Downs. Lots of scores to be settled. Lots of wars going to break out in the middle of that ring. A lumberjack match on that main event. Flying Fred Curry, the challenger, against the great Wojo, the champion, with eight wrestlers around the ring in a lumberjack match. Well, let me tell you, Curry was stupid enough to ask for a lumberjack match. Last match, he got his beating outside of the ring. This time, he'll get his beating in the ring. I only hope those lumberjacks are good, because that way, when he runs out, they'll throw him right back in. I can give him more of a beating. Even more of a beating than last time. I'll give him his beating right in the middle of the ring. And one more advantage with having a good, tough, strong lumberjacks at ringside is that when you throw them out of the ring, when you want them to go out, they're still going to bounce them back in, and you're still going to take an ugly face of his and drive it right to the canvas where it belongs. You know, I was sick in my stomach when I watched Curry, a supposed top wrestler, run like a whip puppy at the last throw of Kip South because he couldn't stand up under the battery that Wojo was giving him. I, he was a disgrace to himself. He was a disgrace to his family. He was a disgrace to everything. But it all evens up. It all evens up tomorrow night because that's when Curry gets knocked around from one side of that ring to the other in a way not seen in many a year. In fact, he's going to beat him like Curry committed some sort of a crime. Well, he'll have to withstand the drop kicks, the flying assault of flying Fred Curry, and the title will be on the line. Eight wrestlers stationed around that ring. I want to know why were you running so much last night? Wait a minute, you were running. I had to chase him all the way around that building. Where are you going to get your beating tomorrow night? You're going to have it, Curry. You can't run anymore. You're going to take your beating in the ring. Right back with more action standing by here at the Premier Center in Detroit, Michigan. Flying Fred Curry will join us shortly to face the Russian Igor Zakov. Let's go to the ring, get the introductions underway. 
This next match is a one fall, 10 minute time limit bout. Introducing from Russia, weighing in at 240 pounds. Introducing Igor Zatkov. Zatkov. His opponent hails from Hartford, Connecticut. Weighing in at 236 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, flying Fred Curry. Curry. One fall, 10 minutes. The fans cheering as usual for flying Fred Curry. And Bruiser, this has got to be a classic. This is going to be a good match. Two contrasting individuals here. All right. In fact, two contrasting countries. Yeah, the Russians Russia. and the United States. Yeah. Fred Russians and the Americans going at it. Fred is an all-American football player. Of course, son of the uh, legendary Wild Bull Curry. Yeah, but I mean, he's not like Wild Bull Curry. This Fred Curry's got a lot of class. And just a quick yeah, mention for the general. fans who remember Wild Bull Curry that uh, Wild Bull unfortunately passed away a few months ago. Flying Fred, though, putting the moves on to... The Russian Igor Zakov puts the twist on that arm. And look at oh, that move by Curry. Beautiful. That's, that was something you don't see every day, Terry. Fred probably learned that way back in high school. I don't believe I've ever seen that. Well, you see a lot of things from Fred Curry that you see very few other people, if any, use. He is a determined young man who certainly works hard to perfect his craft. There, turned it off the Russian. Took him right down in a nice arm drag. Rick Curry with the arm bar on Zakoff now. He's got that arm, the left arm of the Russian, totally tied up. Nice shot of Fred Curry in this hole by the cameraman. Always doing an excellent job. Still to come of the program today, the Kentucky Butcher. Certainly we've had a lot to say about him. We'll get to see him in action. Seven feet, two inches tall, 580 pounds. He's coming up. Terry. As is the world champion, the great Wojo. Terry, while you were talking, that cops straight. Curry's both eyes with those tape thumbs. That last blow may have been a little bit below the belt. Uh, I don't think so. But I, you know, a lot of times those knees, they'll hit you in the top of the thigh, and it hurts even worse than getting hit in the groin. That large thigh muscle is really painful, you know, if you get a pointer in it. And that's, that's what it looked like happened to me. He caught him in the upper part of the thigh, which is even more painful than a in the groin area. Trying to take a little bite out of Fred Curry now. The mad Russian, Igor Zakov. Yeah, this guy. Zakov into the ropes, referee counting him, ordering him back off of the ropes to let Fred Curry get to his feet again. Uh -oh, what and Curry up ends him. That had to hurt him. That had to hurt him. His back oh. hit right in the middle of the ring right there. Absolutely. Nice move by Fred Curry. Certainly he's had to take a lot of starch out of Zakoff. Zakoff trying to come in over the top rope on Curry now, and he does. Caught him right in the back of the neck. Igor Zakoff, double dangerous in that ring. There's no doubt about that. Fred Curry will certainly know he's been in a match when this one is over. Zakoff is going to town on Fred Curry now. He's got the advantage. Right across the face. Took him down with a flying mare and in for the count. But only to one. Fred Curry able to kick out of it. You notice they don't, they're not wasting a, a second. Action back. Fred Curry certainly a fiery wrestler. And I think we're going to see some of that very shortly here as the fans rally to find Fred Curry's side. The chant is going out, USA. Fans don't care too much for this Russian Igor Zakov. I, I see a sign on the other side of the ring tag where it says they're calling him a troll. He's not a troll. A troll isn't it? a little fella. This Russian's six foot and he's about 250 pounds. So he's much bigger than a troll. 
He might be droll. Oh, oh there's the drop kick right, by right, Flying Fred Curry. Right in the mouth. Moves. Right in the mouth. Two in a row, three oh, in a row. Oh, you see a lot of wrestlers throw drop kicks, but Not I've never seen any throw a series. Oh, right oh. over the top rope. Goes Zach Vaughn. Yeah. Great camera work. They don't waste a second, these two. I don't like to rush him, but he's got a lot of fortitude and just plain guts. Zakoff gets right. back into the ring. We'll give him credit for that. He took a bad bump on the outside, but he is tough. He's putting the boots in on flying Fred Curry. I think something may have snapped inside of Russia here. Over the top goes Fred. I thought he had him. The Russian Igor Zakoff and Flying Fred Curry. We knew this would be a great match. Whipped into the corner. Here comes the Russian. Curry, though, up and out of the way, and he takes his man over, rolls him up, and the count goes in. Well, what action. I thought the Russian had him. It fooled me again, Terry. Beautiful move by Flying Fred Curry. Certainly showing his experience. Fred Curry has been around with the best. The Russian protesting, but to no avail. It'll go down to the record books as a clear-cut victory for Flying Fred Curry. Zakoff having his problems with some of the fans. And Fred Curry relishes his latest victory, and certainly an important one for Flying Fred Curry. They fooled me again. I thought the Russian had him. Fred Curry has his arm raised in victory. Certainly a leading contender for the world championship as we see it again. Zakoff thinks he has everything going his way as he whips uh, Curry into the I, corner. I thought he had it too, but there he looked way over. Fred Curry always thinking on his toes. Catches his man. Watch the boots forcing the shoulders to the mat. And there's no escape for Igor Zakoff. As his shoulders are pinned to the mat with a count of three by flying Fred Curry. Graham's gallery and much more action coming up as we return. center ring it kicks south tomorrow night championship wrestling a night we'll never forget a lot of things going to be settled a lot of things have been talked about now we're going to see some action tomorrow night a world championship match at kips south with eight wrestlers stationed around the ring to keep the participants on the inside should either of them go out on their own or be tossed out they'll be tossed right back in by the eight lumberjacks around the ring the title at stake the great wojo defends against flying fred curry then in the grudge match, it was Calypso Jim who ripped the suit off of Dr. Jerry Graham. Graham is livid about that, but that only happened is because of the fact that Graham cut the dreadlocks right off of Calypso Jim right here on national television. Now, Dick the Bruiser and Bulldog Don Kent will both be banned from Kip South tomorrow night. You'll see the debut of the Kentucky Butcher, seven feet two inches tall. Also, now, this is very, listen, listen, listen. You know, this guy Raymond Raven, he makes me sick. You know something? I'll tell you what. I am proud to be an American. I'm proud to live in the USA. And when I see a no good, vermin, low life like that come out here and talk about the people and talk about everything the way he talks about it, Chuck, it makes me crazy. Tomorrow night at Kip's off, I'm telling you people, I'm begging you to come out and support me tomorrow night because what I want to do is put an end to Muhammad Jihad Sah once and for all, and I want to do it for all my good friends, all the good people in the Toledo area. Come out, please come and check it out. So it was all your good friends who obtained this match for you. See you all of this tomorrow night at Kip South. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to see a lot of fireworks right now as we take you to another installment of Graham's Gallery. The doctor's special guest is Chris Carter. Wrestling fans, another edition of Graham's Gallery. And like I say, we try to bring you the best talent in professional wrestling, but we couldn't get any, so instead we have to settle for Chris Carter. Now, Chris Carter 
is kind of an enigma in wrestling. I mean, people go through their whole life searching for their space in the universe, for their, what is their reality. And Carter, it seems to me that your reality, your function for being alive, your function for <coughs> traveling through the universe, your main function in life is to be beaten up by Dr. Jerry Graham. I mean, at least you know where you stand in life. I mean, let's face it, you have come at me with everything. Ever since I started you, I made the biggest mistake of my life. Everybody makes a mistake. I made one mistake. I started this man in wrestling. I taught him what the holds were. He didn't know a wrist lock from a wrist watch until I got finished with him. I took him up to Canada. We were Canadian tag team champions. I took him down to to the United States where he won the America's Junior Heavyweight Championship. He was a total success under my management and guidance. Then, because of minor contract violations, this man turns on me and then decides, what does he decide he's going to do? He says, I'm going to stop Dr. Graham. So he goes out and he gets some tag team partners like Fred Curry, El Bracero, uh, Terry Tyler. He tries to take the belts away from Kent and I, which is, of course, ludicrous and absurd. Then what does he do? He comes after uh, my main man, the great Wojo. He wants to win the championship. Now, this seems to be the, the newest newest thing that you've got going, Carter, you've been going around challenging, I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, a wimp like you challenging the great Wojo for a championship. Maybe you have some comments on that. You know, Dre, I'm glad in the first place that I don't pay attention to any of your verbal diarrhea because I've mental, heard it over and over again. To do that anyway. And I'm tired of all this deja vu about you getting me into business. But you are right on a couple of points, Jerry. I was the America's Junior Heavyweight Champion. I have had tag team championships, but the one belt that has eluded me has been the WWA Heavyweight Championship. Now, whether this is because you and the great Wojo have been ducking me or whatever, I've been with the <laughs> WWA for two years and I've only had one shot at it, and I've been in the top five contenders, Jerry, for over a year, which you well know, but you will not give me an opportunity. I had one opportunity, Jerry, and because of you, the opportunity was ruined. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You we don't gave, know what I'm talking about. Okay. We gave you an opportunity in Indianapolis, and of course you failed. You were pinned in the middle of the ring by the great Wojo. And the reason I haven't given you another chance at Wojo's belt is very simple. The fans would not patronize a match like that because you are not qualified to shine Wojo's shoes, let alone to be in the same ring with him. You would be much more suited helping set up the ring, maybe. Maybe you'd be more suited carrying the jackets back to the dressing room, maybe shining Dr. Graham's shoes. That is more your style, Carter, because I'm going to tell you something. You don't belong you in wrestling. You to shine your nose, Dr. Graham. That's all we have time do. for, fans. Thank you for joining us on another edition of Graham's Gallery. Well, certainly everybody is talking about the humiliating incident which happened to Calypso Jim when Dr. Jerry Graham and his cohorts cut off his hair. Now we want to take a look at a little piece of revenge that happened not too long ago here on this program. For those of you who didn't see it, let's take a look at Holy Calypso God. Jim's revenge. The Into the, the corner. Stone. Watch out. Samson's got something left. There he does. Nice, nice oh, play he's of got a science. Permit. Yeah. Another permit take down. Good moves by Rick Sampson. Dazzling oh, oh, the world oh, oh, champion. Oh. Scoops him up and down with a body slam. Goes yeah. the great Wojo. That's Dr. So Jerry Graham a little worried here at ringside. It shows you what we know, Tony. We thought Sampson was out of it. Got him across the throat that time. Moves in with a couple of boots and in for the count. One, this could be it. Two. Oh, Samson kicks out. Samson showing us some, some fortitude here. Oh, right down across the knee in that back break. Got his leg up. Bring him away, Wojo. Put him away. Put him away, Wojo. Wojo hoists him up in the air again. What's he going for now? The backbreaker. He's got that spine yeah, stretched the wrong it. way. That's got to be it. That's it. That's got to be it. Samson gives up. disgusting and despicable things ever not too long ago and right here in this very ring you took Calypso Jim jumped him from behind cut his hair that's right I did it I did it because I'm big enough to do it I did it because he looked like buckwheat I cut his hair he looks like a decent man now he looks like a decent human being he should thank me but you know he makes all these threats behind my back he does all these things but you know none of it interests me at all because he hasn't got the guts to do anything to my face so I tell you, no! What's going on, Terry? Well, Bruiser, it's all broken loose in the ring now. This had to happen. Oh, look 
at that. Well, oh, there goes the coat. He's ripping that coat right off his back. Good boy, Jim. Calypso Jim, he is, he's going berserk on Dr. Jerry Graham. He's just ripped that tuxedo coat. There goes the shirt. Calypso Jim, some sweet revenge, sweet retribution here on Dr. Uh, Jerry Graham. I can't believe uh, this. That's what happens when you fool with, with Calypso. When you play with fire, you get burned. That's, that's what they say. And, oh, he's not stopping yet. There go the pants. Well, well I'll tell you. Well, the, the doctor stripped of his dignity, not to mention his tuxedo. He didn't lose his tie, Terry. Oh, look at Dr. Jerry Graham. Look at him. He is livid. He is livid. He has been embarrassed and humiliated, much the same as he did to Calypso Jim here not too long ago. to hear you with your thoughts on the program or if you'd like to write to any of the great wrestlers you see here on Bruiser Bedlam here is the address 151 West Jefferson Suite 514 Detroit Michigan 48226 drop us a line we'd love to hear from you Coming up, ladies and gentlemen, the Kentucky Butcher, the man we've heard so much about. He stands over seven feet tall, weighs almost 600 pounds. In his corner, Dr. Jerry Graham. And, of course, as if the butcher isn't big enough with Graham in his corner, that spells double trouble. He'll be facing a very capable Rocky Guerrero who just made his entrance into the ring. Wrestling fans, this next bout will be one fall, ten-minute time limit. Introducing first from Dallas, Texas. He weighed in today at 230 pounds, Rocky Guerrero! Guerrero! His opponent, alleged to be the largest man on the face of the earth. He hails from Bloody Harlan, Kentucky. He stands seven foot two, 500 pounds. The Kentucky Butcher, Kentucky Butcher. One fall, 10 minutes. Well, certainly looking forward to the debut appearance, at least as a wrestler of the Kentucky Butcher. We've heard him on some interviews did from Bloody Harlan, Kentucky. Did you notice, Terry, when he gets in the ring, show you how tall this guy is, he, can, he lifts his leg over the top rope and gets in. Yeah, right over the top. Now, I'm six foot tall, and I have trouble getting my leg over that second rope and getting in the ring. This uh, man is a massive force. Yeah, he's tall. He's big, he must have a size 20, 21, 22 shoe. Used to work the coal mines down in Kentucky. He must have cleaned out one tunnel at a time. And when it came to uh, clashes between management and the unions, we understand he worked for whoever paid the most. Maybe a little insight into the personality of the Kentucky Butcher and perhaps a, tells you why he's in the has Dr. Jerry Graham in his corner. Dr. Jerry Graham here is just a big pain in the, yeah, he in the is. back of the ear, I'll yeah. tell you. <laughs> He's just a pain. Now, uh -oh, coming out to ringside. Watch it, Moose. Yukon Moose Cholak. Now, a bit of history in this particular confrontation. Right for the very first time, we saw the Kentucky Butcher. They brought up, he and Graham brought up the name of Moose Cholak. He's number one on their list. Yeah. During a recent match featuring Moose Cholak, it was Graham and Kentucky Butcher who came scouting Moose out by ringside. Now, right away, Moose. The Moose is here. Off the ropes came Guerrero, and the Kentucky Butcher not moving an inch. Lays down a heavy forearm like a tree trunk. And again, shoulder top block by the Kentucky Butcher. Graham calling the shots from the outside, orders a slam, and holy Toledo, he gets it. Off the ropes comes the Kentucky Butcher, drops it down, oh my gosh, 580 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. This man is something, will not pin his opponent. A two count went in, the Kentucky Butcher is not yet through with Rocky Guerrero. Oh! Incredible, off the ropes he came. This Graham keeps 
shouting instructions, Terry. Guerrero could be seriously injured, Bruiser. I'm afraid for him. Oh, another splash. You know, Moose has, Moose has had enough of this. Uh, There's the three count. We might, he might have to be helped out after that. I uh, suspect so. Certainly Rocky Guerrero, a very accomplished young wrestler with a bright future. Of course, it's going to take you quite only, a man to show anything. You can anything. only stand so much punishment. Jerry Graham, he has made his debut, and certainly we're all very, very impressed now with the debut appearance of the Kentucky Butcher. We're only afraid of Moose Cholak. Didn't have enough guts to get up here and take his beating like a man. That's right, the Kentucky Butcher, his property, I'm Dr. Jerry Graham, and I'm going to tell you something, Moose, Terry Tyler, and every one of these big men, they're all doing the butcher, of course, had better watch out because this man is steamrolling through all competition because Jerry Graham controls wrestling. I've got the great Wojo, I've got Don Kent, and I've got the Kentucky Butcher. And now they're bringing in the stretcher to get Rocky Guerrero out of here. As Moose Cholak comes to the apron of the ring. Moose, they claim you're afraid of him. I'm not afraid of nobody in the world. This here country bumpkin here, I'll take him right now if he wants him. You want it now? I'll take him. And here comes the moose, and I think I'm going to vacate the premises. Look, he wrestled a small guy like him. How tall is he? Seven feet, two inches tall, 580 pounds, the Kentucky Butcher, with Moose Cholak in the ring now. Certainly not backing down from the challenge of the Kentucky Butcher and his manager, Dr. Jerry Graham. Just lucky for the moose that the referees threatened to fine us when we wrestled because there was no contract. That's what's saving you, Moose. Well, of course, Graham alleged that Moose Cholak wouldn't be man enough to face the Kentucky Butcher, and Moose Cholak certainly proved them wrong on that. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is one fall with a 20-minute time limit. It's a championship match for the WWA Heavyweight Championship. First, introducing from Rocky Top, Tennessee, weighing in at 368 pounds, Man Mountain Tyler. Tyler. His opponent from Toledo, Ohio, weighing 263 pounds. He's managed by Dr. Jerry Graham, the World Wrestling Association heavyweight champion, the great Wojo. Wojo. The great Wojo attacking Bruiser before the bell, and we've got a slugfest going on between the champion and Tyler, the challenger. I don't think it helped Wojo to attack him before the bell. May not have. No, I think he made Tyler mad. In fact, I know he made him mad. Look at him. I'm oh. sure he made him mad. Yeah. Beautiful move by Tyler. Yeah, that's one time when he attacked him, he shouldn't. Yeah. This is the quite shirt. an opportunity for Man Mountain Tyler here, the World Heavyweight Championship at stake. The strategy didn't pay off. The great Wojo, yeah. Olympic star, I was on the Olympic team in 1980. Didn't get to compete due to the boycott. Yeah. Nonetheless, he was on that team. He is uh, not following too many of the things, though, he learned in his Olympic training inside of wrestling. And occasionally, you'll see a brilliant move for the man, but... Well, I'll say one thing in his Olympic career. Wojo was used to wrestling. You know, he had the rules have changed now, but when he was an amateur, he had to wrestle men with an unlimited poundage. In other words, they could yeah. weigh up to 700 no, yeah, unlimited. Now they, they have a limit on the weight heavyweights can be. Tyler throws the champion off. So Wojo's, Wojo is very well trained when it comes to wrestling. Super, super heavyweights. And that training will certainly come into play here. I'm the greatest. I manage the champ. As the champion, the great Wojo, and his manager, Dr. Jerry Graham, you heard from him only moments ago. Tyler, he's going to have to remember everything that he's been taught by Chris Carter and by the others who have helped his career along. Get up, Tyler, before he 
Off the ropes comes Ojo with a sledgehammer across the back of Tyler and puts him down. It's not often you see the big man off his feet. Yeah. Tim Lock to fly by the great Wojo. And the champion having things his way so far in this title match. Oh, he threw nice right move by shoe. Tyler. Didn't hurt, hurt Wojo at all. That's where, that's where you get up. You got to get and gentlemen, up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bruiser, of course, earlier on the program today, we got an opportunity to see Tyler's very first appearance in the ring from a few years back in the Fans in the Stands Challenge issued by the great Wojo. We saw Tyler clamp that bear hug on Wojo, and I believe he did some damage to the ribs, didn't he? Oh, yeah. At the so certainly if Tyler is able to get in a that bear hug again, Here we again, go sure again we'll Terry. I told you, you just can't lay on that canvas more than a second or you're in trouble. Don't you feel better sitting where you belong? Don't you feel better? Don't you wish you could get up there? You haven't got the guts to hit me! You can't hit me! You wouldn't have the nerve to... Don't you... I, you'll be going out of here if you want to hit me again. Dr. Jerry Graham, a constant source of... Well... Yeah, let's let that go. Let's say he's the most harassing person I've ever seen. And that's putting it nicely. Plus, he's a skunk. <laughs> that's putting it a little uh, less delicately. Yes, well, Side headlock by the champion, the great Wojo on Man Mountain Tyler, who uh, weighs 368 he's pounds. He's trying to uh -oh. cinch Tyler up tight. Trying to, uh, he's got that bear hug on uh, him. Oh, and Wojo breaks it quickly. Uh, Wojo's watching for that. He won't let that bear hug be applied to him. If he can at all help it. Tyler's, Tyler's sweating and it's hard to get a good hold on him. Wojo was out of action for quite a while after that. Uh, the ribs were injured by Tyler in that match you saw earlier on the program today. That was when Tyler was extremely inexperienced, had no professional training at all. Now with the professional training that he's been able to, uh, to get under his belt, things might look a little bit differently. Wojo forcing that left arm back in the hammerlock. Keeps forcing it back. It wouldn't surprise me to see Wojo intentionally just break his arm. Tyler's got to be in excruciating pain with his hammerlock. But he takes the champion off his feet. You notice across the way, Terry, all the fans are yelling at Graham. And I think this kind of... Uh, Oh. Got the hockey team from Sylvania Northview High School in Sylvania, Ohio, joining us today at the Premier Center for World Champion for Championship for Wrestling. Well, that's good. That's good. That's whole, the whole team's participating. Watch, Watch out! Here comes Tyler. Oh boy! Hurdled out of the ring by the champion, the Great Wojo, and here comes Graham with a chair and another repeatedly bashing away at the challenger referee, having his attention diverted away by the Great Wojo. Oh, I don't believe it. I'm afraid this is it for Tyler. Graham at ringside again, egging on the bruiser. He knows bruiser can't get up and do anything. Bruiser will be fined again, as he was when he came to the aid of Calypso Jim. And Graham interfering you know, again. You know, it's tough to sit here like a dummy like me. Oh, you're not a dummy, Bruiser. You have no choice. I feel like a dumbbell and a half... Half wet myself when I have to take this. You shouldn't, because the fans all understand it's not your fault. If you had your way, you'd be in there. But the commission has said you're either a wrestler or a commentator, not both. I know, but it's tough to take. Certainly when you've got a couple of guys like Graham and Wojo to contend with. The only thing that's missing here is that bulldog Don Kent. He's probably under the ring, Terry. Wouldn't put it past him at all. Well, you know... That's a way. Collision Tyler. in center ring. Tyler didn't budge an inch. All right, Tyler, get in there. Oh, yeah, good move by Tyler. He got him. Scoop He's slam <laughs> by Man Mountain Tyler. He's got him, Graham. Whoop. Uh, get the. <laughs> Here goes Tyler. He's going to whip Wojo into the corner. The champion's taking his lumps. He moves right in on him. Huh? Tyler with that massive weight again and again. Now, now he puts a bear hug on him, Terry. Into the corner goes. There Here he comes goes. Tyler. But Wojo comes out with the clothesline. And he's pressing his man. He, he might get the count here. No, no he, he doesn't. Get him. No. 
He thought he had him, but he didn't. Oh, come on, Tyler. Let's go, Tyler. Oh, oh my God, a slam. Wojo picked him up, 368 pounds, and he comes on top of Tyler. Well, that shows you the strength of that oh, Wojo. That's amazing. What strength? I hate the guy, but I've got to give him that strength. You've got to give him credit for that. But there's no excuse for what we're seeing in the ring now as Graham and Wojo double team. Get in there and stop it, Terry. I can't move. got to give him credit. I can't believe it. He picked up 368 pounds in a body slam. Not only that, did everybody see Bruiser back down for me? Did you see it? He didn't have enough guts to get up. He didn't have enough guts to get up. Why not? Because he's scared of me. Bruiser is afraid of Graham. Everybody's afraid of Graham and me. You saw it. That's why they called me the Great Wojo. I picked him up like he was a feather. I need some competition. Give me some competition. Certainly a massive display of the power and strength of the Great Wojo. I still can't believe it. Well, you better start believing it. This is the man that has won $100,000 to any other professional wrestler in any commission, federation, league, alliance to wrestle him belt for belt, and not one of them has accepted for $100,000. This man is the most feared man in wrestling. This man has got $100,000, and nobody, not one champion from any alliance, federation, or commission We'll give him the match. So I give you, by default, the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I want Where are these other so-called champions? I've been challenging them for a year. I am the greatest heavyweight today. I'm the greatest heavyweight ever. I want to change the subject for just a moment here and talk about Calypso Jim and the fact that you are minus one suit at this point. I don't in time. care about that suit. It cost me seven, eight hundred bucks. I tip more than that in a week. I'm going to tell you something, right now, right now, anytime, any place, anywhere, Bruiser, are you listening to me, Bruiser? Anytime, any place, anywhere, you and Calypso Jim won a piece of Don Kent and Jerry Graham. You got it. In fact, right now, Bruiser, right now, why won't he come up here? You know he can. You know the commission won't allow him. Don't give me that commission stuff. Yeah. I'm leaving. He's got to you Ladies know, and gentlemen, that's all for right now. I we have got like more a, to come, though, as we return. I feel as small and as goofy as... Look, I'm just trying to... Now they're trying to bait me into... They know if I hit them. Once again, the winner of the fall of the match. They know if I hit them. The great Wojo. Then, uh, then I'll be out of their hair for good. Uh, what can I say? I feel, Ladies and gentlemen, I feel please as tall as a mouse. Ah! Into the ring. Please refrain from throwing anything uh, into the ring. Here's now this guy Terry has really got to be strong to lift him up. This this guy doesn't. This is look, amazing. This is dead weight. Oh, 368 pounds. Just incredible. Yeah. I gotta say it. I got a little more respect for Wojo than I already had before as a I champion. Have, I have no no respect for him at all. Certainly, I can't blame you for no, that. I think he's very strong, but I'm as strong as he is. You think so? Oh, I know I'm as strong as he is. But I don't have any respect. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. Kip South Championship Wrestling. It's tomorrow night. Reynolds and Heather down to Kip South. All the action begins at 8 o'clock. That Lumberjack title match on the main event. The great Wojo defends his title against Flying Fred Curry with eight wrestlers stationed around the ring. Wojo won't be running this time. If either man should leave the ring for any reason, they'll be tossed promptly back inside by one of the eight wrestlers on the outside. You're going to see the debut of another protege of Dr. Jerry Graham, the Kentucky Busher. Seven feet, two inches tall, 580 pounds. You'll meet not one, but two wrestlers tomorrow night at Kip South. Mohammed Jihad Saad has the test of his career against Chris Carter, the spirit of America. You fans demanded it. You'll see it tomorrow night. El Bracero faces off against the Cat, and then we've saved the match of the year to talk about right now. Calypso Jim faces Dr. Jerry Graham. You've seen what's happened between both of these wrestlers right here on television. And I don't think, I think it's safe to say that neither one of you will be satisfied unless the other's career is ended tomorrow night. You know, you hit it right on the head. Excuse me, Bulldog. I didn't mean to trot on your verbiage there. I am coming to Toledo not to win match, not to win title, not to do anything, but take that boy 
That boy, that's right, Clip, so I'm calling you a boy. I took your hair off. I made a fool out of you on national TV, but I did it face-to-face, man-to-man. It was you and me alone in the ring. There was nobody. You come and attack me from behind. I had a $750 suit on. But you know something, boy? I took more than $750 on a night out in New York City. You want to take somebody's clothes off? That's fine, because I don't care. Because tomorrow night, I'm not going to just take your clothes off. I'm going to take your head off. I'm going to get up. I think it's a disgrace that you take a man like Don Kent and bar him from ringside, because he should be there watching me in my greatest day. This is the biggest match of my life. The biggest match of my life. And tomorrow night, the list of Kent. The doctor's going to be on you, and I'm going to whip you like I was your mammy back in Jamaica. And that's where you're going to be, chopping cotton or sugar cane or whatever you make. The lips of Jim against Graham Woods will meet Curry tomorrow night at Kipsaw. Did you see flying Fred Curry fly? Well, I saw him. He's the only guy who can do four, five, six drop kicks at a time. And then Tyler against Wojo. That proves Wojo is still the greatest and the toughest champion of all the champions in all the world. And the Kentucky Butcher, boy, that's got to come about with him against the Moose one of these days. More Bruiser Bedlam coming soon, though. I hope the Moose butchers at Kentucky Blockhead. My moose is my man. He's my tag partner. Go get a moose. Don't let anybody bother you. (laughs) This has been a presentation of Bedlam Productions Incorporated in association with Championship Wrestling Incorporated.